Felt flowers are a wonderful use of small bits of fibre. For example, this flower here only weighs two grams and they're a beautiful present to give to friends and they have so many uses because they can be used for jewellery, for embellishing um, different felt garments for example. And every felt flower starts with a spike at the back. And for my felt flowers, I, these are all the materials I need. So I have some wool. For mine, I'm going to use short fibre merino, but you can also use wool roving if you prefer, or wool tops or bats. I have a few odd embellishing fibres. I have a towel. I have a felting net, although you don't strictly need that, it's helpful. I have a sprinkler, I have a container for very hot water, I have bubble wrap and I have some olive oil soap. So each flower for me starts with a spike and for the spike I won't be using any soap until near the end of the felting process. So I'm going to show you how to make your felt spikes first and then we lay out the flower and I'll go through the whole process from start to finish. I've taken some of my wool bat, but equally this could be roving. And to determine how thick the spike is going to end up, if I actually twist the wool quite tightly, this will tell me how thick, roughly how thick the spike is going to be. But the important thing at this stage is not to get any soap on the fiber. So what I like to do is give it a quick roll in my hands. This might seem a little bit strange. You may not be used to doing this with your fibre. Make a little bit of a point. And then I hold this top portion very, very firmly. And I'm going to dunk the wool straight into hot water. Now, I find it really helps that this water is quite hot. As hot as your hands can bear, not boiling. And then I give it a good squeeze and I let the excess water drip out. And the tip I got was by working the fiber with no soap at the beginning, it's very much easier to get a round spike. And it seems a bit strange, but it does work. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'll just give it a good rub, making sure to keep this upper piece dry. This is the portion that I would attach to a flower or if I was making a sculptural piece and I wanted spikes, that would be the piece that I would incorporate into the layout of the rest of the felt. And then, when I've given it a quick rub like that, I actually add the soap with my hands. And what I'm going to do is just put soap on the outside of the spike, and immediately I can start to feel under my hands that I'm getting a skin on the felt, which means it's starting to come together nicely. I can add a bit more water if I want to. But this is just such a quick process compared to how I used to make cords. A little bit more water. The one thing I would say about this is I wouldn't make a very long piece like this. I think I have a tutorial on YouTube for making cords and I would lay them out in a different way for a stronger, bigger cord if I wanted a handle for a bag. But for spikes or dreadlocks, this is a fantastic way of making them. And that's it done. My spike is almost totally felted. I've got a really good skin on the outside with soap. And this upper portion here is dry and this is ready now to attach to my project. I have a very simple recipe when I'm making felt flowers. I like to have one main color for the flower. I have a splash of some other color just to add a highlight. I like a dark center and then I use some embellishing fiber. Now while it's not strictly necessary to add a spike on the back for a stem, I like doing that, so that's what I'm going to share with you today. So you can use roving, and in that case I would radiate the fibres out from the centre and have the edge of the flower a little bit lighter and a little bit more wool in the middle. But I'm using the short fibre bats because these are my favourite uh, 
wool preparation to use. And what I'm going to do is just lay out a rough circle. Now, there are many wonderful felt makers and there are other tutorials online if you're interested in making very precise, accurate flowers. But I actually like a more abstract flower and that's what I choose to make myself. And that's what I'm sharing with you now. And with the short fibre wool, I can actually put my hand down and give it a little bit of a rub. I'm working on bubble wrap with the bubbles facing up and what I'm trying to do is get a fairly even um, layer of fibre. I can actually see through in places, so I need a little bit more fibre there. So now I'm going to put a splash of another colour. Often I'll go for something that's a bit of a shock or a contrast. And I'll just put that here. Um, not too much, not too thick, maybe like that. And then a small bit of black fibre in the centre. Now, if you enjoy beading, the centre of felt flowers actually look beautiful if you add beads or you stitch them. But personally, I like just doing my embellishments from felt and I don't usually um, add any beads anymore into flowers. I did when I started, but not anymore. So I've got the main colour is the purple, I've got a splash of a contrasting colour, I've got a dark centre, equally it could be a dark or purple or any colour of your choice, and I'm going to just add some embellishing fibres around the outside. And in this case, these fibres, I have them in my studio for a long time, and to be honest, I'm not 100% sure, but I think they're bamboo. There we go. And if I wanted to add a little touch of another colour, I could. So that's the layout of the actual flower from the front. But I'm not going to add any soap or water until I've attached the stem at the back. But what I will do is I'll just put my hand straight down on the wool and give it a little bit of a rub. Gently. Pressure going downwards. And now I can actually lift this up. So what I'm going to do is place it face down. I can see that here is slightly light, so I'm going to just think in my head, and that's going to be one area where I put some of the green fibre from the spike, just to make sure that I don't leave that too light in that area. So with the spike, what I do is I radiate the fibres at the back out. If you remember, I felted it until it was firm here, it's soft here, it's almost felted there and there's a good skin. So I can be quite, not aggressive, but firm with how I pull these fibres. I radiate them out and I'm just going to position this down. And as I said, I've got one slightly weaker area. The fibres here are marginally longer, so I'll just make sure those fibres cover that lighter area. If I wanted to add even more embellishments, I might decide to just put a little bit of green at the back. I could put shorter bands coming out, but why don't I just put a small bit here so you can see what this looks like when it's finished. And laying out your felt flower is as simple as that. Now, I know from past experience that the diameter of this flower is approximately 5 inches, which is 13 centimetres, just if you're wondering how wide this particular flower is. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add some hot water, I'm going to add some soap, and then I'm going to start the felting process. And because the stem already has a skin on it, once I've added the soap and water to the back, you're going to see me position the stem down on the fiber, turn the piece over so that I can check there's enough water at the front. So I'm going to squeeze the air out of my bowl browser, but you can use any sprinkler. And I like adding my hot water 
and soap separately. But if you don't, if you're not fortunate enough to have one of these, if you don't have one of those, you can always add your um, soap into your water and you can just spray soapy water onto your flower. And I put my hand down and I rock like that. And I just go all around the piece, adding the soap. Now, if you're working with roving or you're anxious about putting your hands directly on the fibre at this stage of the process, you can use a felting net, which I think I have one here, and you could carefully put the felting net down and just add the soap through the net and that would just protect the fibre a little bit if you're anxious about handling the wool directly. So if you choose to use a net, be very careful then to lift the spike up and make sure that you get a little bit of soak here as well on this other side. And the most important thing with the flowers is to make a good seal with the stem and the body of the flower. So I'm now going to lay the stem down very carefully, making sure I don't lift it up. I don't want to pull it up. And I'm just going to fold the bubble wrap over like that, or you could use a separate piece, a second piece. I'm going to press down, always wanting to make good contact, and I'm going to turn the piece over. Every time I turn a piece of felt over, whether it's flat felt, as you can see in my tutorial on YouTube, my beginner's flat felting tutorial, or a bag or any, anything, I always press down on the bubble wrap before I lift it up. And the reason for that, when I turn the piece over, it's just so that the fibres are going to actually then have a better connection with the bottom piece of bubble wrap. And it's fairly obvious now that this upper surface of the flower is not totally wet and it hasn't got soap on it. So at this stage I will get a little bit more water in my bulb riser. I'll add the water there and either apply the soap by hand or through the net. If you're working with roving I recommend you apply that soap from the center of your flower outwards but with the wool bats, it doesn't actually make so much difference. Little rub through the net. And then I'll lift the net back carefully. Just be careful that the wool doesn't get caught on the net. And the next thing I do, as I do with all my felt, is I just sweep those outside edges in a little bit. So if it's a little bit light anywhere, the loose fibres just come in a little bit there. So I now have a layer of soap and water on both sides of the felt flower. The spike is already felted but the base of the spike hasn't connected yet with the flower. So I'm going to put the bubble wrap uh, down. So bubbles down on the top, bubbles up at the bottom. I'm going to put a little bit of water there and soap and I'm going to start rubbing the flower. I've given 20 rubs up and down and I'll do the same this way. And then I'll give a little bit of a, a circular rub paying particular attention in the center, which is where I want the stem to combine well at the back. Now I lift the top layer of bubble wrap off. Because if I continue to keep rubbing, what's going to happen is you can see the depressions from the bubbles there. I want to just make sure that I reposition the bubbles in different places. Um, otherwise I could even wear holes in the flower. So already I can feel that the wool is starting to felt. I'm going to turn it over, 
press down. And now I'm back on the side with the spike. So this is really, really important. Not only do I have to give this a rub now to make sure that those um, indents from the bubble wrap don't make a hole, but I have to be very careful and make sure that I lift this spike up. Not that I pull it, but that I lift it up and this section here at the back where the spike was lying down, that that gets a little bit of extra work now. So I'm actually quite confident that I can work this just with my hands directly on the wool. So I like to put the spike between two fingers, my index finger and my middle finger, and just rotate my hand as I rub. Just sweep those edges in again. Personally, I'm happy with quite <laughs> organic edges, but if you are more interested in a precise layout, take your time with this. And very soon, I'll actually start to see the flower actually moving against the bubble wrap. It's quite amazing how quickly this process happens. It's a little bit like dusting a table. So the flower is now moving against the bubble wrap and I'll start to rotate it. And it's already really felting. And I'm making this video in real time. So this is exactly how I make my flowers. It's not a time lapse and it's not slowed down either. So the wool has transformed magically under my hands. I can lift it up. I can even hold it by the, the stem. I wouldn't pull it tightly yet, but I can really feel that this is all coming together. So now I'd like to give a bit of a rub to the back of it. I have to say it's slightly soapy. But rather than trying to move that soap out, I'll just let it get a little bit firmer first. And I might just squeeze some of that soapy water out. Put it back down. So once I can feel that the flower is, is coming together, what I like to do is put the stem between my thumb and index finger and then push down on the, the eye in the center of the flower. Because you want to start shaping the flower. So I'll roll it gently in my hands and I'll put my thumbs at the top. And Already I can see that I can actually pull that and that stem has totally integrated with the flower Which is fantastic I do think felt is an amazing um, It's an amazing technique how something so soft and fluffy can end out so strong and firm So now if I open this out you can see exactly what the flower is starting to look like and it's by continuing to shrink it and roll it and make this more three-dimensional you can get the flower into the shape that you like now near the end of the process i often i'll just show what i do <laughs> give it a squeeze in warm water add a bit more soap back on so i want it soapy but not too wet and I know this mightn't be everybody's cup of tea, but what I actually like doing is putting the flower in my hand like that. And this will shrink it quite dramatically, make it tougher. You could also cut petals if you wanted to. can 
stretch it and you can shrink it. And pretty much all that remains to be done now is to give this a wash with hot water, which I'm going to go and do just under the tap. Remove the soap, make sure I have the table um, cleared so that I don't get any, any more soap on it, and then do a final shaping. And there you have it, a felt flower. So I'll just head off, give it a quick wash and come back and share the completed flower with you. So here is the flower now that I've washed it out. You can see that there is green embellishing fibre on the back of it and the red and the orange is on the front. Now it's not so obvious when the flowers are damp the fibre but once they um, dry you can really see the shine then from the embellishing fibres afterwards such as in this one here and in fact I also included some embellishing fibres on the little spike or the stem of this one here. But an interesting fact about felt once you have the soap rinsed out and when you go to to um, dry your piece just get it into the shape that you personally like you might decide to do a few little folds in it and allow your piece to dry quite slowly. You can also put a curl on your tail. You could curl or the, the stem. You could curl that around um, a chopstick or something. But whatever way you shape the felt and then let it dry, if you have felted this sufficiently, if it's not just very soft and, and fuzzy still, this will then hold the shape. So if I was going to make this into a brooch, I, I would twist this a bit, but I might decide I needed some of the flower to come down a little bit and more to be flat. So you need to just play around with your pieces before you dry them fully. Allow them dry and there you have them. They're just wonderful. And as I say, a few little beads in there would be great. I don't enjoy uh, doing that sort of stitching. So I'm going to leave this as it is and give it to one of my friends. If you've enjoyed this step-by-step -step wet felting tutorial, why not check out my other videos on YouTube for long form tutorials and short tutorials, tips and advice from my studio at Clashine. Don't forget to subscribe too.